Good morning, orchid addicts of all various colors and shapes, and welcome back to the Lion's Garden. Uh, in these days video, I want to show you my orchid collection updates for the month of May. And we have a couple of very interesting things going on right now, uh, but this video is not going to be extremely long as it usually tends to turn out to be. Okay, uh, right now we are going to start with uh, updates on my Phalaenopsis breeding project. Very exciting thing, and as you can see, this is my yellow uh, novelty Phalaenopsis. It was called uh, Phalaenopsis Sogo Shito or something around that. Uh, pretty ironical name. It, this is not a Shito plant, this is quite a very impressive plant. Although it's a bit battered. And as you can see here, it has a mighty seed pod. In my previous video where I showed you my breeding project and talked about the nuances of it, some genetics, some scientific things and some plants would recommend it. That we videos in the description below this video. Uh, so yeah, this is basically a progress update on this uh, video uh, of the breeding. Uh, so uh, honestly speaking, uh, my files have progressed quite nicely. Do you remember this seed pot? It was small. It's really becoming huge. I wouldn't be surprised if I'll have to harvest it in a month. Phalaenopsis need like five months to mature their seeds, but I'm not gonna touch it before it like starts ripping apart or turning yellow, you know, uh, because even if it's big, it still might not be anywhere close to maturity. And as you can see, the petals on this flower have faded, but, you know, the seed pod is looking hefty. Uh, this was, uh, 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 this hybrid is between the yellow uh, Phalaenopsis, which is this one, and the pink one, which I recently got rid of. And another plant which was involved in this, uh, by the way, this is my third cup of coffee today. This is that kind of a day. The other Phalaenopsis who was involved with my big virus, white Phalaenopsis. And some bad news, quite honestly. This is its seed pod. Pathetic. This was pollinated by this magenta-colored reddish Phalaenopsis. So I was quite excited to get something out of it, but... Uh, what is this? Just, no. Pathetic. This Phalaenopsis continues to disappoint me over and over again and I, I am pretty much giving up on it. No 50th chances, no more chances on you. But, 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 it's a warrior. It's quite stubborn. Look, it's creating another flower spike. It, just, it is constantly buying itself more and more time. It just doesn't want to go out because I'm getting rid of this Phalaenopsis. Look at it. It's horrific, but the new leaf it's creating looks quite nice, but uh, it's only a matter of time before it starts producing these pittings. Uh, the spring is here, the growth season is in full force, so of course it will want to take off, but uh, uh, so, so, so. Uh, by the way, a little bit of a story, uh, so uh, I'm currently working quite frequently in restoring uh, some uh, humongous set of doors in a museum and people keep asking me for cigarettes, which is quite hilarious. Like, look at me, do I look like the most charitable person in the world? Do I look like a charity on two legs? Why are all you asking me cigarettes? Like, seriously. And I was talking with the, like one of these people, like, why are you asking me cigarettes? Go and buy your own cigarettes. And they were like, I don't have money for that. So why the hell are you smoking if you can't afford it? Like, come on. If you can't afford the hobby, okay, why are you doing it? What, 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 what is this childish nonsense? Okay, next off, uh, I want to give some growth updates. Uh, yeah, let's start with the next candidates in the breeding project. This is my foul 
Amabilis, you can see it's still holding on quite nicely. It's beginning to drop some of its older blooms, but as you can see here, it's extending its flower spikes, so we are going to continue having wonderful blooms. And it's quite, a, you know, very curious, because both of my Amabilis type uh, Phalaenopsis, they are starting to create more and more flower spikes in May. And they are, you know, autumn bloomers, so I guess we've had some cold temperatures recently. But in any case, the Phalaenopsis amabilis species is creating yet another spike, which is very exciting. But as you can see, its situation with the virus is getting only worse. Even this leaf is starting to develop some pitting, so yeah. Not, uh, not, uh, not particularly good news, but it looks good, so that's good. <laughs> so here is my Phalaenopsis violacea species, and as you can see, it's starting to create some blooms. Yeah, it's very close to flowering, and I'm absolutely in love. Like, as soon as the warm season begins, your novelty Phalaenopsis kick into growth and start producing some new blooms. And an interesting thing about this, uh, it had two uh, flower spikes which it created last year and they are currently extending. But this thick uh, flower spike over here, that's a new flower spike. Uh, and this orchid uh, is very young and it's going to have three flower spikes. And as the years go by, it's only gonna grow more and more flower spikes. This is a very vigorous plant, even though it's actually quite inbred. So very exciting for that. I'm gonna breed the Violacea with Amabilis. So yeah, stay tuned for future videos of that. So another thing going on with my species Phalaenopsis. Here is my, uh, what is this called? Frenchies Plastic Yellow. Just a quick update. It's extending all of its flower spikes. It's preparing to grow some new blooms. Very exciting, we're going to have some wonderful orangish colored blooms on this one. And of course the star of the orchid growing community, Phalaenopsis Sweet Memory Leodoro. It's creating a new little flower spike over here, don't mind the guard rays in the background. So yeah, some very, very nice news on this orchid, excited to see how it goes and a new leaf is coming up really strong so that is very exciting so uh, i won't even have to pan my camera around that much uh, this is my phalaenopsis valentini which is functionally a cross between violacea and cornu cervi and as you can see it's creating uh, extending its previous flower spike over here and it's going to have some wonderful burgundy colored flowers Sorry for the camera being a little bit out of focus. Uh, so yeah, and here it is also creating a new flower spike, which is very excited. But it is getting rid of one of its oldest flower spikes. But that's a good thing because it's buried beneath the ground anyway. Uh, so, and my cat layers are all also uh, starting to wonderfully extend their new growths. And this is my cat layer purpurata. And as you can see, this is its new growth and it's coming on very nicely. It's really thick and promising. And oh boy, you know, I really like my plants to be thick. And this is its previous year's growth. I hope you can make it out. So this one is definitely going to be much larger, so maybe we can have some blooms sometime soon. This is my uh, Brasso Cattleya Amethyst, and as you can see, it's also extending a new growth very nicely. This one is probably going to be bigger than any of the ones before. And here is my... Uh, what is it called? Let's just call it Red Catlia. Co Ching Beauty Vicky, I think it was called. So yeah, its little black nubbin has begun to extend into a very thick, wonderful growth. What else do we have going on over here? This is my CG Robling crossed with Doviana. The thick bushy little seedling it's extending its new growth quite nicely it's probably going to have only a single one this time around 
a change of scene. And here we have its youngest sibling, uh, the one which created the least amount of new growth. And as you can see, this time around it has two new growths and they are looking very promising. I think it's not going to extend the third one. You can see in the middle a little uh, swollen node. Uh, but yeah, I'm perfectly satisfied with two new growths. It's gonna bush up very nicely. Uh, another update on a cat layer, my Guan Mao City, the black cat layer, so to say. It's extending its new growth quite nicely. It dropped its previous leaf, which is very nice because it looked hideous. So yeah, this growth is going very horizontally, but I hope it's going to pick itself up and go upwards. It's also extending its root system quite nicely. It looks impressive in the, even though it's stuffed in a very inadequate pot, let's just say that. So we need to report this one very uh, soon. And, uh, okay. Don't you flop over on me. No floppy or hits are allowed. So yeah, this is my Asantha Roge or something like that and also it has not finished blooming yet which is very impressive and it's already extending new blooms on its previous flower spike and on all the leads of it, you know, all the leads have more buds on them coming which is absolutely gorgeous. This plant is freaking impressive, like wow, thumbs up. If you see this, buy this. I will link the nursery where I got this from uh, beneath the video, together with the name or names of all the plants featured, featured in this video. Now this plant is my white dyed Phalaenopsis, well not mine, my mother's. My father bought it for my mother in Valentine's Day and as you can see it's still going on very nicely. It's uh, nearing the end of its blooming cycle, but yeah, it's very impressive. This is a good white Phalaenopsis, probably a replacement for the previous one. And what I want to show you here, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out. You can see there's a cut wound in its flower spikes, yeah? And there the dye to make the flowers pink was injected. So yeah, this is a dyed Phalaenopsis. Another thing to show you, which is quite exciting, is my, uh, what is it called? Alisara Tahoma Glacier. It uh, created two new growths uh, this time around. They are relatively tiny, but I don't mind. As long as this plant continues to grow and bloom, I'm okay with it. And it has created a lovely flower spike, which is going to have three blooms on it, I think. Which is nice, I'm all for, you know, a low amount of very big blooms on my orchids, which is quite exciting. I mean, this is not impressive, but I'm still impressed. You know, if you put in the effort and give me, you know, positive fruits of my labor, I'm gonna love you no matter how big they are, you know. Show the effort and I will appreciate it, so yeah. And here, over here, we have my relatively new Miltoniopsis orchid. I don't know its ID, but any case, I reported it quite recently. It had a very poor root system, I think, when I reported it. But you can see it's not shriveled at all. It looks like it's going to be, you know, a soldier. It's going to impress me. And it has begun to create some very nice new growths. Another one, smaller one over there, yeah? So yeah, this is an impressive Miltoniopsis orchid. I must be doing something correctly, ha? <laughs> and let's give you a little bit of an update on my Catacetum orchids, which I have over here. This is my, uh, what is it called? Cycnodes Wine Delight. And as you can see, it's extending its new growth very nicely. It's very impressive. It's only begun to grow and it's already huge. This is going to be just as impressive as the previous two years, provided I remember to water it before it goes dry. And as you can see, it's, you know, old suitable, which I divided is also very pump, plump and healthy. And maybe we can even see some roots. Yeah, it has not taken over the 
pot quite yet, but you can see something is wrapping itself around the pot, so that's a very good sign. And my black, uh, what is this called? Monirara Millennium Magic Witchcraft. This orchid always comes into growth a bit later, and the previous year it had a very tiny, you know, unimpressive growth as you can see, because I didn't water it frequently enough. But it's creating, it's extending a new growth right now, which is a very, very lovely thing. I'm excited. Probably going to report it into a slightly bigger pod, but we'll see. And here is another division from my Cyknodes Wine Delight. And as you can see, it has extended a node. It has begun to grow and it has not shriveled up that much at all. And it's already producing new roots. <gasps> I think this is going to be very good. I'm going to have two Cyknodes Wine Delight, which is delightful. <laughs> so yeah, 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 this is this is very lovely. All of its nodes on the, you know, uh, soda bulb seem to have died off. But as always, life finds a way. So it found a node it can grow from on the very basis of the orchid. Maybe it even created a brand new one. I wouldn't know, but in any case, I am well pleased this orchid has not betrayed me. It has lived up to its name. So yeah, I think that's more or less that I have to show you. Nothing much going on over here. You know, a bunch of orchids are creating its new growths. My Rincolelia digbiana is very impressive over there. Don't know if it's going to have any blooms quite yet, but it's receiving a lot of sunlight and I'm fertilizing my orchids quite well. So I think it should be fine. Uh, uh, some bad news. Here is my Lelia speciosa. Very exciting, big, large bloomed Catlia type. It's a pure Lelia species, but as you can see, it's losing some of its leaves, and that is because it is failing to produce, uh, you know, roots. It's it's quite sad, but uh, yeah, over here, look. A brand new root so at least this largest division is going to be you know a survivor I don't know what the rest are going to do but this is a species orchid a Lelia nevertheless so yeah of course it's a bit more finicky but you know uh, we will see what it does in the future. Hopefully it, you know, hangs on and continues living. I would really hate to lose it as it is very rare, it is endangered and it was flipping expensive. So yeah, what else do I have to show to you? I can talk about uh, a couple of my plans for the future. So, you might have noticed this little miracle over here. Every day is a miracle, connect back to the people, and all the people you miss. So yeah, this is a pansy, a Viola Vitrochiana, and this is a very delightful one. You know, every time I visit a garden center, even if I'm not looking for plants, I always pick up something. That's called the gardening bug, the plant bug. I really have it. You know, I'm completely infected, no turning back. And an impressive thing about this pansy, yeah, it's in bud, uh, it's going to bloom very soon, but it has utterly humongous reddish pink kind of blooms and it looks like it's going to have a far more vivid color. You know, look at this, it's almost burgundy, which is my favorite color. I'm very flipping excited. So yeah, you can expect uh, a series of videos devoted for uh, pansy and violet growing. They will be coming on very soon. Uh, orchids and uh, violets are both my favorite plants. I have completely fallen in love with them. So yeah, we'll do a video about breeding pansies, about growing pansies and violets, my collection. And there will also be some expeditions in the wild to show you what's, you know, going on in my country in relation to them. And I think that's more or less it. So yeah, basically speaking, thank you for watching this video. Of course, remember to like it if you enjoyed it, to show me that you want more of this type of video. So yeah, see you next time. Cheers!